Hey, so now we're on the final chapter, chapter 14. Congratulations, you made it to the last video. So today we're going to talk about uh, income statement and the balance sheet, how to do vertical and horizontal analysis. So let's first, let's look at what does horizontal and vertical analysis mean. So vertical is up and down, okay, top to bottom. We can do vertical analysis on the balance sheet. We can also do it on the income statement. Okay. Horizontal means side to side, horizon, it's so left to right. So when we do horizontal analysis, we're doing from one time period to another time period. Okay. And we can do horizontal on an income statement and the balance sheet. What we're doing is we're gonna turn the numbers into percentages. And it helps the, the data analyzer interpret the meaning easier. The percentages we can then look at and compare ourselves from one time period to another time period. Is our percentage getting bigger or smaller in that category? We can also use the percentages to compare ourselves to our enemy. So we can, we'll go ahead and look at that. And that's called a common size statement. Okay. So that's like benchmarking. So we can look at our percentages versus our direct competitor, their percentages, and see who's doing better and possible reasons. Okay. So let's first let's start out with what do I have uh, for us today? So I have Toyota, their balance sheet for 2012 okay. and 2013. So here's my asset side. And then I have Toyota's balance sheet, the liability and equity side for 2013 and 2012 from MSN Money. And then I have the income statements for Toyota and Isuzu for just 2013. So first off, let's go ahead and work with the balance sheet and we're gonna do horizontal and vertical analysis. So let's go ahead and start with horizontal, left to right. So what I wanna do is, I want to look at 2012 to 2013. Did we get uh, bigger or smaller? So we got bigger. So my percentage should be a positive percentage, an increase. But how we're dealing in millions and billions, you know, how well did we do? How much did we actually increase? So to figure out how we actually did it, we're going to take the new minus the old divided by the old. And we can go through with each category that we're interested in and do that formula to figure out our percentage increase. So here I'll go ahead and do the first one. So I did new minus old divided by old and it gives us 12% or 11.88. So go ahead and pick a couple of these and do horizontal analysis for the assets and horizontal analysis for the other side of the balance sheet, the liabilities and equity. So I'll go ahead and do this one for you. So 2012 to 2013, the number got bigger, so we should have a positive percentage. So I'm gonna do new minus old divided by old. Okay. And we should get 9.6%. Go ahead and pause the video now and try and go ahead and do a couple of these and see what answers you get. Okay, Okay. so pause. Okay, and we're back. We're unpaused. So let's go ahead and look at my answers. Uh, you should have uh, similar, maybe just a little bit different because of rounding. Okay. So for total assets, I did new minus old divided by old. I'm going to get 16%. Over here, for my numbers I have, for horizontal analysis. And so if I look at total current liabilities, I'm doing new minus old divided by old. All right, so that's horizontal. And horizontal works the same way with an income statement. We would just take one time period and another time period and do new minus old divided by old to get the percent change. And so it'll work the same way for income statements. Okay, now the trickier one uh, is vertical statements. The reason why vertical statements are trickier is because they are different for balance sheets and 
uh, income statements. For a balance sheet, we are going to take the number that we're interested in and we'll divide it by the total assets. Okay. Or we'll take the number that we're interested in and we'll divide it by the total equity, total liabilities and equ total equity and liabilities number. They're the same number. Okay. For an income statement, we're going to take the number that we're interested in and we're going to divide it by our total sales, our revenue. Okay. So with the balance sheet, we're taking the number and dividing it by the number at the bottom of the balance sheet. With the income statement, we're going to take the number and divide it by the number at the top. Okay. So let's go ahead and do uh, an example. So again, Toyota. So if I'm going to do vertical, so up and down, so I'm not going to do side to side. So let's just look at 2013. So I'll do total current assets divided by total assets. So my current assets make up 39% per, of my total assets. What number is going to go here? Okay. So I'm going to take a number divided by itself. It's 100%. Go ahead and pause the video and try and do a couple of these for the 20, year 2013. Okay, here's my 2013. So, so go ahead and pause now and do vertical analysis on a couple items. Pause. And we're back. You unpause the video, so you must have a couple of them done. You feel confident. You can do it. Let's see what we got. So, I'm gonna... so here's my vertical analysis. So my uh, buildings and improvements, okay, taking that number, divided by my total assets. So if I was interested, okay, my buildings improvements makes up 11% of my total asset value. Over here on my equity side, okay, I have a couple of them done. I did total equity. I'm just dividing it by, just dividing them all by the base number there. And of course, this one is going to be uh, this divided by itself, 100%. All right, so that's how we do the vertical analysis on our balance sheet. Let's look at the income statement. So 2013 vertical analysis. I want, I want to go ahead and do Toyota and Isuzu. So let me zoom out. Okay. So let's look at the, each number and we want to divide it by total revenue. So if I did Toyota, this number would be total revenue divided by itself, 100%. So my 100% is now at the top. And I'll do my net income. I'll take this number divided by total revenue. So 4.36%. Okay, and I can go through uh, each of these and do the same thing. Go ahead and do this, pause the video now and do it for Toyota and Isuzu. So pause, and we're back. So you unpaused. So you did a couple for Toyota and a couple for Isuzu to get the feel of it. Okay, so this is what we should have for Toyota, and this is what we should have for Isuzu. Okay. Now, I can then do kind of a head-to-head -head comparison of Toyota versus Isuzu. So this is, our common, this is uh, referred to as like a common size statement. I see that Isuzu has 7%, Toyota has 4.36%. What does that mean? That means that Isuzu is keeping $7 of every $100 that they are selling. So if they sell you a truck, okay, uh, they're keeping 7% of that. Where Toyota only keeps 4.36%. Okay. Now, to be fair, Toyota and Isuzu aren't the same uh, market share. Okay. They're not apples to apples. Isuzu is a lot smaller corporation than Toyota. So uh, that could be an, uh, 
an unfair comparison. Usually a smaller company, they will keep more of their net income, where a larger company uh, loses to all their various expenses. But the, the littler company is usually a little leaner and they can fight and lower those prices a little bit better, manage their expenses a little bit better. But over here though, if I look at cost of revenue, I see Isuzu's cost of revenue is actually higher. They're spending uh, a larger percentage than Toyota. So cost of revenue for these guys would be something like the metal, the rubber, the labor, direct labor going into making and building all those parts to make the vehicles. So again, it's, it's typical for a big company to actually have a, a, a lower percentage here because they can take advantage of maybe economies of scale. They can buy their parts cheaper because they're buying a large quantity, a lot larger than uh, Isuzu perhaps is. Okay. So their gross profit is actually less, but they make up for it in their operating expenses. So their expenses are, Isuzu's expenses are a lot less than Toyota. So if I was uh, Toyota, this would be, if I was comparing myself to Isuzu, this would be like a red flag. Like why are we spending uh, a higher percentage in our selling and administrative expenses than Isuzu? Okay. There might be some waste there. So we're having a lot lower operating income. Okay. So just to recap, what we just covered. So we covered horizontal analysis, side to side, year to year, okay, for our balance sheet. And it works the same way for an income statement, year to year. And then we did our vertical analysis in the purple. Okay. So we just focus in on one year. Okay. If I wanted to, uh, so here I have vertical analysis. I just did a couple for 2012 and 2013. So I can see that uh, from year to year. So in 2012, I was at 38%. In 2013, 36%. I can see a trend or a pattern over time. Are we decreasing or increasing as a percentage and whole of a specific count that we're interested in? And so uh, vertical analysis Good. In the purple, red was horizontal, and then finally we did vertical analysis on an income statement, which is different than the method that we use for the balance sheet. So we're dividing by the top number to the bottom number. And I did it for two different companies, so I can compare, and it's known as a common size. Okay. So that's it for chapter 14. Uh, we just covered horizontal, vertical, and common size. Any questions, go ahead and leave me feedback. And congratulations on finishing the chapter 1 through 14 course in financial accounting. Thank you and have a nice day.